Hello, everyone, and welcome to SCORE Fairfield County's live webinar on Secure Your Future with Entrepreneurship. I'm Bob Hogan, the webinar coordinator today and a business mentor here at SCORE Fairfield County. I'm going to be your host, and our presenter is Michael Rosen. More on Michael in just a minute, but first, some brief information on SCORE. If I could ask you to move the slide, please, Michael. Um, SCORE is a nonprofit national partner of the SBA, and locally here at SCORE Fairfield County, we have over 100 volunteers with a wide range of industry process and subject matter expertise, and we offer three primary value-added services to small business owners. First of all, we offer free one-on-one -on -one counseling, and you can access that in person, or you can do it by video, telephone, or email, and you can do that by using the yellow bit.ly link that you see on the screen, or you can go to our website and click on the request a mentor button. Secondly, we offer a wide range of educational workshops and webinars like the one today, roughly 100 throughout the year. And lastly, we offer extensive resources on our website, including access to subject matter experts. Our next live webinar will be tomorrow, Wednesday, June 22nd at noon. And the topic is Presenting Excellence with Diane Winston presenting. You can find more specifics on our website, fairfieldcounty.score.org. And if you're on our website, we also have a large number of recorded webinars that cover a wide range of business topics. And you can view those at any time by clicking on demand webinars. Uh, just some logistics about uh, today's uh, webinar. We've set aside time for Q&A at the end of the presentation. So Michael will take all the questions at the end. And if you have a question though, you can type it in at any time using the Q&A button and which is located either at the top or the bottom of your screen, depending on um, what kind of setup that you have. We will uh, end the webinar sharply at one o'clock to respect your time. The webinar is being recorded and a link to the recording will be available on our website, fairfieldcounty.score.org under on-demand webinars within the next day or so. It's now my pleasure to introduce our speaker, Michael Rosen. Michael is a franchise consultant and owner of FranNet of Connecticut and Rhode Island. Michael is based in West Simsbury, Connecticut and holds an MBA from Boston University. He has over 30 years experience in the insurance industry, including over 20 years in senior executive roles for startup and developing companies. I'll now turn it over to Michael. Michael, it's all yours. Thank you very much, Bob. Let me uh, get it moving on here. Here we go. All right. Uh, so that's me, Michael Rosen, uh, as Bob said. Um, I've been a uh, franchise consultant for going on six years. Uh, I am based uh, here in Connecticut. I work with people, though, uh, throughout the Northeast and, and in the U U.S. in general. Uh, okay. uh, this is what we're going to talk about here today. Uh, why consider business ownership? Uh, what what are the best options uh, for you? Um, risks and rewards of business ownership, uh, how to find your, your best fit, your business personal model, and um, we'll talk about next steps. Okay. Uh, you might be wondering what is this friend net all about? Uh, very quickly, uh, we're about a 35-year-old international franchise consulting firm. We've got around 100 locally-based consultants located throughout the United States and Canada. And uh, we're national partners with SCORE, as well as the SBDC. Both uh, are uh, partner resources of the SBA. And what we do is, is educate uh, prospects on, on opportunities. Uh, we, we help them determine if business ownership and, and franchise ownership in particular um, can work for them. Uh, we pre-screen both the franchisors that we work with as well as our our clients, um, uh, we do not sell franchises. Our, our services are provided free uh, to you if you wish to avail yourself uh, of them. Um, and in, in that regard, we're, we work like a uh, executive recruiter. Okay. 
we ask our uh, our clients uh, frequently uh, why they're considering business ownership, and these are some of the common terms uh, that that we hear. Uh, you probably um, you know can um, see yourself uh, you know looking for similar um, uh, aspects of uh, of business ownership. These terms should mean something to you, uh, but there may be more. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about three different ways that you can start a business. Uh, there are pros and cons uh, to uh, all of them. You could start a business from scratch. Uh, you could buy an existing business. You could uh, invest in a franchise. And we're st starting with starting a business from scratch. Um, your own creation, uh, fully under your control, um, no predetermined rules. Uh, there may be a large upside depending upon the nature of the business. Uh, a lot of the, uh, a lot of our big, you know, technology companies uh, started uh, small in a garage with an idea. Um, you know, you may want to build a business from your passion. There are some disadvantages, of course. Uh, you need to create all the systems. Um, there are limited financial options. You typically need to bootstrap it yourself or, or seek out venture capital. There can be a slower ramp up and um, you're gonna find lots of uh, bumps and turns along the way. You could look for an existing business, and this is uh, this is something a lot of people want want to do. They want to skip the startup phase and go right to uh, having a business that is, uh, you know, churning out uh, profit. Uh, and there may be that kind of business out there. Um, you have to be willing to uh, pay for that businesses. Uh, that are profitable are going to sell at a at a multiple, uh, so it will it will likely be a bigger investment. Uh, but you'll find uh, cash flow. You'll find uh, actual financial results that you can uh, review uh, yourself or with an accountant. Uh, it may be more attractive to lenders if it's a business that is uh, been making money. Um, it it should have an established uh, customer base with employees in place uh, and uh, systems. You may also be able to get owner financing uh, in some cases. Some disadvantages, uh, well, it, the cash flow might not always be what it seems. Uh, it, you know, it, it's difficult to get a really good read on, on what the multiple should be. Uh, Sellers always price it higher than, than buyers think it's worth. Um, okay. you, where will you get the training and support? Uh, are there any hidden motives? Why is the seller looking to, to exit from the business now? Make sure you understand that. Um, and uh, are the employees going to uh, stay in, in place or will they potentially follow the, the seller? Um, yeah, what, what do you have to protect yourself that you don't have a, uh, a big exodus uh, of employees? And you need to make sure that, that you build any debt that you incur uh, in acquiring the business into your uh, financial planning. You could buy a franchise. Uh, we're going to talk more about that uh, today. Uh, advantages of a franchise, um, there may be uh, name recognition. You, you are um, investing in a, in a license. Uh, okay. There will be proven business systems in place, um, training and support before you start your business, as well as 
as you go. Uh, typically a lower failure rate. Uh, you need still to make sure you find the right fit, which we're going to talk about a bit today. Um, uh, overall, uh, typically a lower cost. Um, financing options varied, um, it being that it's a, um, a, a franchise that, that has been around for some period of time. Uh, you should look for franchises that are on the SBA franchise directory, um, meaning that uh, they've, their documents have been reviewed and they're eligible for SBA uh, funds. Uh, you will get a disclosure, uh, a, a franchise disclosure document. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, and and uh, it'll be a franchise family, a culture, if, if you will, uh, to being part of a franchise system. Uh, there are disadvantages. Not every industry is uh, going to be right for, uh, for franchising, um, although you'll be surprised, I think, when we talk more about that. Um, there are frequently structured operating systems and uh, there may be territory restrictions, uh, as well as um, restrictions on what kinds of products and services you can sell in the business. Uh, and there is this thing called a royalty payment, which is how the franchisor is able to sustain itself and uh, make a profit. A franchise is, in the most basic terms, a, a license to use the name, trademarks, products, and systems uh, of an existing business in exchange for an initial franchise fee uh, and uh, ongoing royalties uh, for a term. A franchise is, is subject to an agreement, uh, and uh, those, the agreement is typically uh, a term could be anywhere from, from five years to 15 years or, or longer. 10-year uh, terms are the most common. When we look uh, for franchises, especially with everything we've been through here over the last couple of years and some of the unsettledness in the economy uh, today, uh, we really we're looking for for businesses that are that meet certain uh, standards. Most people, you know, are concerned about uh, the economy and what where are we headed. Uh, or they they also are concerned about you know are we really out, outside of the uh, the pandemic. Uh, so we're looking for businesses that are uh, driven by. Uh, demographics that um, that are that are growing uh, that that are less apt to be affected by by the economy and and uh, and the pandemic for that matter. We we look for essential services. Uh, we look at businesses that help uh, other businesses uh, thrive. And we're, so. When we look at uh, businesses that are driven by the, the senior demographic, the aging uh, population, uh, those might include uh, personal care and, and companionship services, nursing, uh, facility placement and, and advocacy. Uh, uh, also could include consulting and um, estate sales is another um, category that is built on uh, on the aging uh, demographic. Um, another another one would that would be a higher investment would would be um, would be health healthcare services, for instance, um, uh, physical therapy, uh, for example. Um, but most of these other uh, categories are, you know, can be uh, lower investment options. Um, and uh, they might even be home-based.
other category would be the residential repairs and uh, home modification. Uh, <clears throat> essential services include uh, automotive, uh, generally uh, a bigger investment requires some kind of uh, uh, brick and mortar uh, with, uh, with bays, maybe a showroom. Uh, and there's some examples of what that uh, could include. Uh, there are also some home-based services that, uh, that, that provide uh, needed um, repairs to autos um, and uh, as well as, as other um, uh, business and, and, and residential uh, repairs. Damage restoration. Uh, is, is when there's uh, an accident uh, or a storm, uh, it's a it's a need that needs to be needs to be met, uh, and we're certain see, certainly seeing a, a lot of the the latter, uh, and uh, that's expected to to continue. So we're looking here at at businesses that you know deal with water and fire damage. Uh, storms and accidents uh, you know, could include uh, roofing, siding, gutters, windows. It's a low to uh, moderate investment depending upon uh, the ve vehicles and equipment that you need to run the business. Uh, there also are uh, professional white collar uh, B2B uh, types of businesses. Uh, these these are often uh, solopreneur types of businesses, uh, with the exception of, of of staffing, where where they can uh, start with with one person. Uh, they're they're often uh, can be home based, uh, low overhead type types of businesses. Um, it's it's helpful to have some sales background uh, when. In these businesses, they all involve some kind of client acquisition. Okay. So the franchise uh, industry is regulated by the uh, Federal Trade Commission for uh, about 50 years now. Uh, and the Federal Trade Commission okay, requires that, that any business that uh, that intends to franchise uh, in the United States, they have to have a franchise disclosure document and it has to follow uh, a certain uh, content uh, and answer questions uh, that are specified by the FTC. And here's, this is the, some of the information that, that has to be included in that disclosure document. So it, it's, uh, it's very transparent. Uh, it it um, has to reveal um, a lot of information about, about their management team, about the, the cost, the total investment, all the, all the um, uh, fees that, that you'll incur uh, along the way in order to get the business started and, and run it during the initial uh, few months of, of operation. Uh, including working capital. Uh, also include a, a, a co copy of the franchise contract or, or agreement. Um, in, in addition, you're gonna find uh, a listing with contact information for uh, current and past uh, franchisees. And, and this is Im important because you're gonna wanna talk to people that are in that franchise uh, system and, uh, and ask them about uh, their experience and really validate everything that you, that you learn along the way. Uh, most franchisors will, will include some kind of an earnings claim. However, that's not required by the, by the FTC. Uh, whatever information they put in, however, uh, they need to be able to to back that up. Uh, financial statements will, will be included for the franchisor. 
and uh, that's uh, that that can be uh, a, a a important uh, piece to to look at. Also, all their policies need to be spelled out. So there's really no, uh, there's no question uh, when you uh, decide to move forward with a, with a franchise, you're moving forward with your eyes wide open. You've had an opportunity to review all this information and ask questions about it and, um, and, and get clear uh, answers. So current and past franchisees are going to let you know uh, the success or, or failure rate uh, for that for their, their franchise, uh, and which is a big big difference uh, versus uh, moving into something you know completely on your own. Uh, only if the franchising model will allows this kind of uh, research using uh, past results. And um, and understanding uh, others' uh, experiences, um, you know, with working it with that franchise. I mentioned uh, when we got started that uh, that that franchising is not in uh, in every industry, uh, but uh, I think you'll be sur as surprised as I was when I first got involved with, with the, the franchise franchising that, uh, that it's in actually more than 90 industries. Uh, and, and there are over 3,600 different franchise companies uh, with around 900,000 operating uh, units uh, today. Uh, franchising covers, um, you know, the typical uh, fast food, uh, quick service restaurant that you're all familiar with. Uh, that segment is probably is the largest in terms of operating units, uh, but but franchising touches, you know, so many more uh, areas and 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 biz types of businesses that. You don't see um, you know, on on Main Street unless you're you're you need go to look for that service. You you don't know that those franchises are out there, but they are a meaningful uh, part of uh, of the economy today, uh, and and they provide um, services that uh, that people and businesses are looking for. I also want you to know that uh, that there's really not an automatic correlation between what the franchise cost or investment is and the potential return. Uh, there are many uh, affordable franchise concepts, particularly uh, service businesses uh, that don't require a, a brick and mortar type of uh, investment. Uh, that uh, can generate a uh, significant uh, return. Uh, average initial investments, you can see that um, that nearly half of the um, franchises, you know, today require investments, total investments of uh, under two hundred and fifty thousand. And, uh, and there are a good number of, of franchises that, uh, that require investments of right around uh, 100,000 uh, and some can be even less. Uh, not to say that there aren't, if, if you are well capitalized and you're interested in, in franchises that, um, that require uh, brick and mortar, um, you know, that, that those aren't out there as well, but you, but there really are uh, investments that um, many people, you know, can uh, can afford to get into. Particularly uh, when you consider the the various sources of of funds. Uh, 
that are available to you. And these are some examples of uh, financing uh, sources. Um, SBA uh, backed loans uh, and other, other loan products that, that are available. Um, of course, uh, your own uh, savings. Um, and <clears throat> as well as there are ways of being able to tap into uh, retirement funds that you have. Uh, you know, if you have uh, enough uh, put away that you can take a very a small percentage of, of that uh, of those funds. It, they can be directed uh, to your business in using what's called a rollover for business startup. Uh, and and in, uh, in doing that, those funds remain uh, tax deferred so there's no, uh, there's no immediate uh, tax consequence. Uh, there's no penalty. Uh, it's not a loan. You don't have to pay it back. Um, and, um, and and those those are very have been increasingly popular uh, these these days. Common uh, misunderstanding about starting a, a, a franchise is that you need to have industry experience. Uh, and in, in most cases, that is not the case. In fact, franchisors want people who uh, will use their system. They want people that will focus on being an owner. Uh, they look for people that have business and management skills. Uh, that are that are strong communicators, uh, that are that are good with with people, both uh, employees and and uh, and customers. Uh, th they want to be able to train uh, the new owner on how to use their system. Uh, they they want you to be uh, working on your business uh, rather than uh, in in your business uh, in most cases. So if you are going to operate a, uh, a painting company, the last thing that they want is to have the owner uh, up on a, on a ladder uh, with a paintbrush. Uh, that's, that's not the role that they're looking for. A franchise is gonna be a great fit for you when it's a vehicle that can get you to your destination. Okay, will will it meet your financial goals and your lifestyle goals? Okay. Uh, you need to be uh, convinced that it will uh, reduce risk and provide uh, income security. Uh, look at starting a franchise, like any business, is not an easy task. Okay, but over the but over the long run, as you build your business and, uh, and, and it gets known uh, in the community, uh, you are going to uh, create a valuable uh, asset. Uh, a little bit more on royalties. Uh, royalties are really a trade-off, right? You go exchange some profits in the long term for mitigating risks in the short term, okay? And there, the royalties are what keeps the the franchisor going, uh, and and able to uh, to to innovate and uh, able to respond to changes in the marketplace. So you want your franchisors to be um, to be profitable and uh, and able to support you over the long term. A franchise or a franchise works, okay, because it's going to provide a proven systematic approach to starting and staying in business. The franchise system 
provides the experience. Okay? Simplicity, training and support, name recognition, sales, marketing and operational skills, and an overall culture of, of teamwork. Okay? Uh, you, you want to get to know who your, your franchise executive team is, uh, who's going to be supporting you, uh, and, and that they're providing you with the, um, you know, all of the, the back office and, and marketing support uh, that you will, will need to be successful. When you make a decision uh, to invest in a franchise, you're, you are in business for yourself. It's your business but you're not by yourself. You have the ability to, to lean on both the franchisor okay, and uh, other franchisees. Uh, you'll develop strong relationships. You'll learn best practices. Uh, you'll discuss your challenges and, and they will help you uh, along the way. So, when you're considering uh, a franchise business, uh, you really want to ask yourself these questions. Are you willing to follow the franchise or system? Okay. Right. If you're not somebody that can follow a system and you want to be independent, uh, then maybe uh, a franchise isn't the right thing for you. Okay. Uh, you want to to determine is it affordable when you make an investment in a franchise or business in general you don't want to stretch yourself too thin so you want to make sure that that it's affordable and that you have uh, you have some uh, flexibility uh, to to uh, deal with uh, things that might come up outside of owning the business um, is this level acceptable? You, you want to look at, uh, you know, is this a early adopter type of business, uh, you know, where you're going to be uh, first to market? You may want that, right? Okay? Uh, but in, in doing a first to market type of, uh, type of franchise, there aren't going to be a lot of other franchises for you to validate with. So you've got to determine, is that the right for you? It could be a great opportunity uh, as long as you uh, understand what you're involving yourself with. Uh, and, and lastly, and perhaps most importantly, is will you enjoy your business? You want it to be, uh, you want to understand what your role is going to be uh, in, in running the business and uh, you can need to make sure uh, for yourself that it's something that you're going to uh, get some enjoyment from, uh, and you're going to want to do do it for uh, you know a, a, a fairly long time. What's important to you? Uh, what are the what are the motivating factors? You want to understand that to find your the right fit. Uh, we, we have a tool that we use at, at FranNet called an Entrepreneur Readiness Profile that, uh, that will uh, help you uh, and uh, to, to establish what your, what your goals are, what your core skills are, and uh, and, and motivations for owning a business. And it provides a very nice, uh, concise uh, report uh, back to you uh, and, and gives you some, some recommendations. It's uh, you know, not something that's gonna be, it, it shouldn't be strange to you, uh, but, but it can um, provide you uh, with confirmation that uh, you're heading in the right direction. Uh, 
part of the uh, building a business model is uh, thinking, you know, really somewhat introspectively uh, about what kind of business you, you, you would want to run that you would feel, uh, feel good about, about owning. And, and these are some of the characteristics uh, that are, um, that are in every business has. Um, and uh, you, you will, you know, think, give some thought to it. And, and uh, as we put that together, uh, we'll be able to connect the dots and uh, make some recommendations. You'll want to think about your transferable skills uh, if, if you complete that the entrepreneur profile, which, uh, which is a free tool to use. Uh, it'll, this'll, it'll give, a, give you and, and us a, uh, some measurements uh, of your uh, transferable skills. Uh, even if you've never done sales and marketing, you, you have some of those skills innately uh, in, in you. Uh, and uh, some, same thing for these other uh, categories. But it's important to know uh, where, where you, you land and, um, uh, and look for uh, businesses that will utilize uh, your strengths and, and allow you to um, uh, outsource, uh, hire, uh, or look to the franchisor for those, uh, those areas uh, that you're not as strong in. Uh, some other recommendations uh, that I have for you uh, would be to uh, consult with other professionals, uh, like a funding consultant, uh, okay. uh, a franchise attorney as you, as, as you move down the, your, the path, an accountant, uh, work with your, your SCORE uh, mentor uh, if you have one. I suggest uh, looking at some books. Um, these are a few examples of, of, of books that, that uh, can be helpful. Um, if you reach out to me, uh, I'll be happy to send you a link to, for a free uh, ebook that uh, we have that's called Crossroads. And uh, we're going to now open it up to some questions. And I've provided here also my contact information, uh, as well as a, a QSR code. And if you're uh, if you've got your 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 smartphone uh, available, you can just point it at the QR code, and it'll give you a little a form where you can you can let me know uh, how you want to communicate. Uh, if you want to communicate, uh, and um, and and then let me know if you'd like a, a copy of the of the slides. Uh, I know this is going to be recorded, so that's available to you as well. Uh, and I'll I will send your free Crossroads ebook out to you. So now I'm going to open it up to some some questions. That's great. Thanks, thanks, Michael. Um, we will um, use the remaining time um, for, for questions and up until the top of the hour. We'll take as many as we can. If you have a question, please use the Q&A button at, on your screen and you can just type it in and we'll, as I say, we'll take as many as we can uh, before the top of the hour. And we don't have any at the moment, Michael. Sometimes I'm, I'm asked, what do I think are the, uh, are, are the hot uh, franchises? Um, and uh, I, I say, uh, be careful if they're, if they're too hot because uh, if hot franchises could also mean that, that, that it could be a, a fad. But, uh, but what I like to look for in, in a franchise our, our business businesses that um, that that add something 
uh, different, that are disruptors within, uh, within the, the industry. Uh, for, ex for example, uh, I, I, happen, I like a, a business that provides a, a, a patented uh, option to uh, conventional painting. Where, where, it, where it can provide a factory uh, warrantied uh, finish that's like new, uh, but at a, uh, a fraction of the cost of, of replacing. This can apply to home siding, to uh, uh, kitchen cabinets, uh, and, and even roofs. It's a company that, that has um, uh, innovation, uh, built into its uh, DNA, uh, so that's that's an example of of a, of a franchise that uh, is in a, uh, a an industry that's highly fragmented, but has a has a feature that that um, other other companies can't provide. Michael, there are no questions, but um, I, I have one. Are there any rules of thumb? with what people should expect with respect to the time to pay back on their initial investment when they buy a franchise? Like, should they expect to return their investment over say three, five or 10 years or any rules of thumb there? Uh, well, uh, every uh, franchises are gonna be different and that's a good, a good question to ask. What is the, uh, what is the, the payback? And, uh, and I, I would say that, that, uh, uh, I think it. I think it ought to be uh, fewer than, well, fewer than five years. Uh, some some franchises, especially service brands, uh, require a smaller investment, uh, but provide uh, a, a sufficient return uh, that that you can uh, you know break even within uh, within a couple of years uh, and. There are other uh, there are other businesses that that um, will uh, will get to uh, cash flow break even. In other words, uh, the revenues that are coming in are, are covering uh, all the costs. Uh, you know, by the time uh, you open, because they have um, uh, very well put together. Uh, pre-open marketing uh, campaigns. Uh, so I look for I look for franchises that that um, you know will generate uh, revenue uh, that will achieve a, a, a payback potentially uh, on the on the on the faster side, um, and, um, and so that when you are ready to exit, that you've uh, built a, a valuable asset. Right. That's, that's good. Uh, good rule of thumb there. Again, if you uh, have a question, you can uh, just type it in and we'll, uh, we'll take it. Uh, I think you must have been too thorough, Michael, in your, uh, in your coverage. <laughs> that happens. <laughs> Well, uh, I hope I can will hear from from you from you all, uh, and I'm also happy, to, of course, to have uh, any kind of uh, one on one uh, Q and A. If you'd like to uh, schedule a call with me uh, and and ask uh, ask questions, uh, I'm happy to uh, to take take those calls, um, you know, offline at any at any time. And uh, if you're interested in, uh, in completing uh, the an entrepreneur profile, uh, you can uh, either let me know uh, by an email or use the QR code and uh, we'll get that set up for you. Uh, and I think you'll find that to be a worthwhile exercise, whether, whether you're ready to uh, investigate uh, franchise ownership now uh, or, uh, or, or in the future.
Okay, just a, a reminder to everyone, um, as we said before, the, um, the webinar has been recorded and the materials will be available in the next day or so on our website, fairfieldcounty.score.org under on-demand webinars. And our next live webinar is tomorrow, Wednesday, June 22nd at noon. And the topic is Presenting Excellence with Diane Winston presenting. And again, you can find more specifics on our website. Again, if you'd like to take advantage of the free individual counseling, you can use the yellow bit.ly link we showed earlier, or you can go to our website and click on request a mentor. And uh, please fill out your evaluations that are being today and in closing a big thank you to michael for presenting so stay well everyone and enjoy the rest of your day thank you bob thank and thank you everybody for for joining